Happy holidays, everyone. It is December 28th. <laughs> Welcome back to Spiritual Growth Journeys. Almost the end of 2022, which for me has been quite an awful, disgusting, horrible year. Unfortunately, I hope for you all, it has been much better than mine, wherever you are, whatever you're going through. Um, it's It's been a difficult year. I am I am basically proclaiming that 2023 is the year we turn the cabal shit show around and we take back our planet finally once and for all that is what i'm declaring and from my lips to god's ears god's ears i hope uh that's what we see this year um so wherever you are i hope you had a wonderful um christmas or hanukkah holiday whatever it is that you practice and um Today, what I want to discuss with you, uh, because it's the holiday times, and as they say, Jesus is the reason for the season. They say that a lot. Um, basically, what these holidays are all about to me, really more so than um, worshiping something or someone or celebrating somebody's birthday. To me, it's more about family getting together and family also correlates with love with the concept of love and your love for your family and your friends and wanting to spend quality time with them to me that's the most important part of the holiday whether you celebrate christmas or you don't or you celebrate hanukkah or kwanzaa or maybe you don't celebrate anything but to me this time of year is all about your love for your friends and family and spending that um quality uh, time with them. So today, what I'd like to talk to you about is the concept of actually self love. Um, this is a concept that so many people I noticed in the collective of awake uh, community people who are what we call empathic star seeds. They really, really lack in the area of of self love because they a lot of us have all been abused our whole lives. Um, I noticed a lot of people who came here as Earth Angels and Star Seeds have been through things like ritual uh, sexual abuse. Um, they've been molested. They've been abused by parents. They've been abused by spouses. They've been abused by friends taken advantage of walked all over bullied a lot of us have been bullied since we were little i've i've shared notes with so many other star seeds who are on youtube right now who are teaching people who do the same work i do and they've all had parents who were horrible to them and um they were bullied the whole time they're growing up because they were unusual and different from everyone else because we're star seeds and we're unique and we stand out. And, um, and these are people who, including myself, we're all very kind, loving, compassionate, and we give, give, give. And all we do is devote ourselves to helping humanity. And what we receive back, unfortunately, is a lot of, um, issues because the dark is constantly trying to take out our light and smother our light. So they'll use our friends against us, strangers against us, family against us, um, the dark entities. And when I say the dark, I'm talking the demonic entities that don't want us to be here on earth and don't want us to, to fix this planet or to ascend or, you know, save the planet. They don't want us to do anything good. They, they just want to destroy the planet. So they go after all of what I call light workers, star seeds, earth angels on a continuous basis. Um, but self-love is, is a real issue in this community because we're so busy helping everyone else that we tend to neglect ourselves, not just that, but, um, we, a lot of us don't, receive the love that we deserve to receive in our lives. Maybe our spouses are not so nice, or our family is disrespectful, and you're not really receiving the kind of love you need. And the only place you're going to get it is from yourself. You know, it, it's kind of like I've said lately that the only person I trust on earth is me. <laughs> Because I've I've had so many people backstab me and walk all over me and hurt and hurt me and break my heart in my life. I would say almost every human who's ever been in my life close to me has hurt me somehow. And so at this point in my life, I just trust me. So self love is um, pretty much the the way that we survive this whole 
process we're going through on earth, because when you model that self-love, hopefully other people will follow suit and, and will also um, do the same and be more loving to you. Also, it also creates, it's manifesting because what you think about and you focus on, you attract more of that. So if you are doing a lot of self-love and self-care, then you're going to hopefully attract more love into your life and more care from others, more people actually caring about you and wanting to take care of you and help you and assist you in your life. So it's really, really important. So my big question for you all is how many times in your life or even in the last week, whatever, have you said to yourself, I, I love me or I love myself or looked in the mirror at yourself and said, I love you, Bob or Sandy or whatever your name is, Kimberly, you know, looked in the mirror. How many of you have done this? How many of you actually done that? Probably not very many of you because it's not a common thing. But one of the most important things you can do for self-love, the biggest step, number one step, is just getting up every morning and making a practice to look in the mirror and to say, I love you to yourself and say, I love you. Say, good morning. I love you so much. Hug yourself, put your arms around yourself and just say, I love my body. I love my life. I'm so grateful to be here. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for everything, you know, I have like... The hardest lesson I had to learn recently is, and this is really personal, I'm going to share this with you, but I've had curly, frizzy hair my whole life. I was born with a little hair, head of hair. I popped out of the womb with all this frizzy, like curly hair on my head when I was born. And most of my life, I hated, hated my hair. And then when I finally got it past, how do you want to say, having children, the age I was like in my mid thirties and I had children. When I finally got to that age, I had matured enough to a point where I started to lo- love and accept my hair and and actually really enjoyed, especially because I'd have all these people coming up to me, strangers everywhere I'd go and say, oh, your hair is so, so pretty. And so I really started to learn how to love my hair. And um, fast forward to uh, July, the end of July, I came down with the C OVID stuff. Um, I came down with that. I was very, very sick. I ran a fever of like 102 for three days and I was sick, very sick for three weeks. And then I had coughing and symptoms for a good month, basically. Um, And several weeks after I had it, I had some symptoms. And so then about two months ago, I started losing, I'd say two, three months ago, something like that. I started losing massive quantities of hair out of my head. I'm talking entire chunks of hair just coming out hair all over the floor in my house, everywhere I go. Um, my hair started, um, coming out. I have, it looks like I have a lot of hair to you all, but actually it's just because it's curly. It's an illusion. If you grab my hair around, there's, I used to be able to put my fingers around it like that. And now my finger goes all the way to there. I have like, literally I lost 60% of my hair. I lost all my bangs and a lot of my bangs. I'd say most of my bangs in the front. I have little bald spots I'm hiding. I'm covering up with luckily my hair is curling and um, I've lost it. And this is a common thing. They call it post. I think it's like post stress hair disorder or something. It's also called, um, Televin affluens or some affluens or something, but anyways, there's an actual diagnosis for it, and it's basically um, massive hair shedding after a stressful situation. So, if somebody in your family dies and you get really griefed and stressed out, you can lose massive quantities of hair. Um, after childbirth, you can lose massive quantities of hair. A lot of women have babies and then they lose a lot of hair. Um, after getting an infection of any variety or being hospitalized, you can lose massive quantities of hair, any kind of situation, a divorce will do it. Um, any kind of situation that causes massive amounts of stress in your life will lose, make you lose, um, a whole bunch of hair all of a sudden, and the hair shedding can go anywhere from a few months to like nine months uh, before you start growing your hair back again. And it can be pretty bad. And some people can lose all the hair on their head or most of the hair on their head. And some people never grow up back again. Some people do. So the, so the, the moral to the story is when you're not 
loving yourself and taking care of yourself, a lot of things happen. You get illnesses. I came down with the illness in the first place because I it was a, a wake up from the universe because I was doing nothing but helping everyone else and taking care of everyone else and serving the planet and, you know, working with people. And I wasn't taking as much time to myself and to calm my own nervous system down and, and do self-care and, and that type of thing. So that's how I got sick in the first place. Um, I needed to be forced to sit down and shut up for a month and just take care of myself for a couple of weeks or more, which is what I did. I didn't go back to helping people again for about three weeks from when it started. So, so there's that. The, the, the other thing is I am super grateful. Gratitude is such an important thing. And now every day I'm thanking God for my hair, you know, it's like, because I've lost so much of it. I've lost 60%. And so now I'm just grateful for every hair that's in my head, every little single hair that's in my head. I'm, I'm grateful for that. Why? Because if I were to lose it all, it would be awful. And, you know, I'm already thinking about the possibility of going and buying a wig. <laughs> I don't want to have to go buy a wig, but I'm considering it because um, my hair is still shedding and shedding and shedding. And I, there's no stop inside. I don't know when it will stop. You know, I keep praying it stops right this moment. Um, I lift up my prayers every day and ask for it to stop, but you know, it's still going. And so the important thing is we need to have gratitude. So right now I'm feeling really grateful for every hair that I still have on my head. I'm feeling grateful for my body that I have a body. It's really important for us to love on our bodies and take care of the body. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says so in the Bible. And even though I've I've done a little Bible bashing, especially in my new book, Walking with Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, I talk about all of the lies that are in the Bible, there's still a lot of really relevant, important, good stuff in the Bible. And there's a lot of phrases in the Bible that are that you need to take very seriously. And one of those is the fact that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it's really important for you to take care of your body and love yourself, like love yourself who you are and, and get rid of what we call your inner mean girl or inner mean boy. That's that voice inside of your head that says, I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. I suck. I'm stupid. I'm this, I'm that, that little mean voice. Oh, I'll never be able to do this or I'll never have that. You need to tell that voice to shut the, you know, what up you need to literally tell it to shut up and you need to change that voice in your head to, I can do anything I put my mind to. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Another biblical phrase. Um, you know, I am perfect just the way I am. I love myself just the way I am. God loves me just the way I am. Um, you know, I am just fine. I, you know, these, these are all phrases that you need to pay attention to. You really need to pay attention to everything you're thinking, everything you're saying, and everything you're doing on a daily basis. And, um, basically, uh, change, change that to the positive version. You may want to start writing it down. So when you catch yourself, have a notepad and paper nearby, a couple of them around the house. And when you're beating yourself up, you know, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm never enough. You know, nobody gives a rat's patootie about me. My family hates me. My friends think I'm stupid, whatever, whatever thing is going through your head, you need to write it down and then you need to cross it out and put right down the opposite um, counteraction to that. You need to counteract it. The reason why is this is called thought counseling. And the reason you need to do it as quick and as soon as possible is because when you have negative thoughts, they go into the body and they damage every cell in your body and they stay in your body and get passed down through your DNA, what we call stinking thinking or negative beliefs and negative thoughts. And you can actually counteract these and you can cancel them out by catching yourself doing them immediately. And then saying the, the counter mantra to it is you can say, that's not true. That's a lie. I'm not going to believe that lie. Instead, I'm going to believe that I am perfect just the way I am. I'm loved just the way I am. You know, people want to help me. 
I attract lots of friends, new, wonderful friends into my life, whatever positive thing that's the opposite of whatever in the heck you were just thinking and saying, you need to write it down. So what I would do is I'd keep a journal and I'd write down every ugly negative thought that you're thinking uh, throughout the day and start making this a practice, cross it out, cancel it out and put the, the opposite to it on the same sheet of paper. And Every morning when you get up, looking in the mirror and telling yourself how much you love you yourself, putting your arms around, hands around yourself and giving yourself a hug every now and then and just saying, I love me or hug a, a stuffed animal or a pet or something. Um, the really cool thing about having a pet is they give us unconditional love. So if you're somebody whose entire family is basically turned on you um, and hates you now for the last three, four years because, you know, you're not buying into the media and um, following the narrative of the of the matrix anymore because you've unplugged from the matrix and they are still plugged in and they see you as some kind of evil monster because you're unplugged from the matrix. You need to start doing a lot more and a lot more and a lot more of these self-love exercises. And if you have a pet, that is a great way to do it because these pets give us unconditional love back. They actually return the love 100% times 100% times 100%. They're amazing. So if you have a cat, a dog, even if your pet is a bird or an iguana or a snake, even you can still love on them because they still have the you know, ability to give you love back. They don't, there is no judgment. They don't judge you. And, and if you notice like dogs, there's dogs where people beat the dogs, which I think is evil. Anyone who harms an animal is a sick monster. As far as I'm concerned, anybody who has the, the want, you know, wanting to harm a pet, anybody who has a desire to harm pets, but whether it's cats, dogs, birds, iguanas, snakes, squirt, whatever the pet is, they're a monster. And so the thing is, is that these animals are just unconditional love. God created them with unconditional love and they are pure unconditional love. And so that's all they give you back. And so it's really, really important for you to um, hug on your pets, love on them, pet on them as much as possible, because it's a really, really good way to replace that emotional joy and comfort that you're not receiving from friends and family who are still plugged in, who see you as this weird conspiracy theorist. There's so many of us that are, we could just listen to our families call us crazy conspiracy theorists on a daily basis. And it's really, it's really, def you know, they defame our character. They put us down. They say horrible, terrible, mean things to us. Um, there are people several months ago who I know, who his family were saying that they hope that they die because they wouldn't get one of these things in the arm. One of the can't see my finger in the camera for some reason here, where we go, I'll do it there. One of these poke things. Okay. So they wouldn't get one of those. And so their family was hating on them um, and telling them all kinds of mean things like you should die because blah, 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 whatever. All those people, um, who are experiencing that and have been experiencing it for the last few years or even your whole life. Maybe you're somebody who your whole life, like I'm going back all the way to age two, was bullied by other kids. My mother was abusing me. I had a family member who who molested me. I had all kinds of awful, you know, things happen to me. And so we need to do self-love more than anyone else because we have to counter all that abuse and all that torment and torture and ugliness that these really mean third density, horrible people have done to us our whole lives. We have to constantly counteract that. So it's really, really, really important. I keep looking out the window because there's weird, <laughs> weird stuff going on in the sky right now. Just really weird stuff. In fact, put my glasses on so I can see better. Let's see what the heck is going on. Wow. There's some really strange, there's something strange going on in the sky right now. I can't even explain it to you. It turned a weird red color and now it's turning a pink color with gray and it's just weird, weird stuff going on. So anyways, um, none of us know what's coming. We don't know when it's coming. Um, all we have is this day. You need to, to really spend each of your days honing in what I call your joy and happiness uh, quotient. 
So you need you need to basically up your ante on your joy and happiness every day while we're going through all this trauma on this planet. Because none of us know when things are going to change, how it's going to change, what it's going to look like. We don't know the day of our demise, you know, when we're going to leave here. Nobody knows anything. So what you need to do is really focus on staying in the moment and every day creating joy and happiness for yourself. Okay. Don't depend on your family, especially if you have family who are not nice to you. Don't depend on them. Don't wait around. Maybe someday they'll be nice and they'll do something joyful for you because it's probably never going to happen. Um, I've given up. <laughs> I gave up. So, excuse me. So what you need to do is focus on creating that joy for yourself, whether it's going and getting a pedicure. If you have no money at all, you can still create joy. You don't, it doesn't take money. I get a lot of people write into me about, Ooh, I need money for this and that. Most of what I tell people to do, you actually don't need any money. You don't need money to go create joy by spending time in nature, walking through the forest, go drive your car. I'm sure you have a car. If not take a bus, take an Uber or whatever, or take a bicycle ride to a wooded area somewhere or to a park and go spend time in nature. Um, if it's snowing or nasty weather, you know, go for a walk in the, the snow, put on your boots and your hat and your gloves and go for a walk in the snow and just breathe the fresh air and enjoy nature, sit and meditate, listen to high frequency music. That's free. Uh, watch comedy shows or movies or videos and make yourself laugh and create joy that way. That's free. I mean, there's Lists and lists and lists of things you can do that don't cost a single dime that create joy. You can find things in your house that are sitting around that you don't need that you can make crafts out of and do craft projects. Um, you know, and then of course there's thousands of things you can do if you have money. You know, you can go see a movie, you can go out to a nice restaurant, you can um take a trip to a beach somewhere or take a vacation. I mean, there's so many things you can do to create joy. Um, in your life. And so there's no excuses. You can't say, oh, I can't do these things, Kimberly. I don't have any money. No, 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 no. No excuses, people. I'm not taking that as an excuse. Um, there's there's a lot you can do to cr create joy. I mean, something really goofy that I did um, the other day that, that didn't uh, cost me a lot of money. It cost a little bit of money, but just a little, not a lot, as I ordered... Um, some new nail polishes um online and they were very reasonable they were like three or four dollars a piece they were just cheap nail polishes i ordered some different colors they're non-toxic ones they're supposed to be vegan and non-toxic and you know i'm playing with the colors and trying different colors on my my fingers and you know that gives me joy doing art on my fingers with colors and painting the other thing that i'm doing is i got this brilliant idea um, that I'm going to start making hand-painted uh, ruin kits that I'm going to activate and um, bless and infuse with, um, um, let's just say, kind of supernatural energy. I'm going to infuse these things and make them available um, to people for a reasonable you know, price ruin kits. And that gives me joy to be able to express myself and make something creative and artistic. You can sit and take out pens and paper and start sketching or drawing. I mean, there's so many different things you can do to create, you know, joy. For some people, joy means sitting and reading um, a, a slutty romance book. <laughs> my grandma, bless her heart, she's in heaven now. She passed right after my daughter was born. I love my grandma so much. Her favorite thing was reading cheesy romance novels. And some of them were pretty naughty. And she loved reading raunchy, naughty romance novels. And, you know, my grandpa died when I was 10 or something. So she was alone a long time. And, and that's what gave her joy was reading. And she also loved her soap operas. She loved watching soap operas every day. And that's what gave her joy. So you need to find out what gives you joy. That is part of self-care. Um, meditating every day, going and getting massages if you can afford it, or reflexology or acupuncture, doing whatever, making sure you go to a doctor regularly to get your annual checkups and taking care of the temple of the Holy Spirit, eating a high vibrational diet. You know, the diet should be organic, um, pretty much all organic. If you can, if you can't afford, I have a lot of people say, again, you know, Kimberly, I don't have money. I can't afford organic. Well, if you can't afford organic, do the best you can and buy as much organic as you can afford. And then 
maybe try to grow some produce in your own backyard. And if you don't have a backyard because you live in an apartment, maybe you can find somebody, a friend or someone who does have a vegetable garden and you can trade them for something that you do. Maybe there's a service you have or something you have that you can trade people for. When there's a will, there's a way. Um, I believe you can do anything you put your mind to. And so stop making excuses. And another part of self-love is to stop blocking yourself from being happy, happy and successful by making excuses. I can't do this because of this. I can't do that because of that. I mean, you can sit and make up 50 million excuses a day for why you can't do stuff. But when there's a will, there's a way. If whenever there's something I really want really bad, I am going to move hell and heaven and earth um, to get it. I'm going to move everything out of my way and I'm going to get it. You know, I mean, I came from a family who was really poor and had no money. My parents died in debt. I shared a bedroom with my um, brother until I was 14 in a two bedroom apartment in the ghetto. And, you know, my parents were always really poor. I put myself through college and everything that I have in my life, I have, um, you know, I'm middle class now. I'm not, you know, poor and I'm not uber wealthy. I'm just middle class, but everything that I have, I've worked for it and I've achieved it. I've set a goal and said, this is the goal. This is what I want. This is what I want to create and manifest. And then I went for it and I worked really hard. And um, because if you sit around and do nothing and you just bitch about what you don't have or how you can't get this and can't get that, but you're sitting around and not doing anything, that's stupid. You need to stop complaining and bitching about what, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. And just sitting there and doing nothing. You have to <laughs> put it this way. There's a phrase that is basically um, the universe um, will meet your needs when you're, when you're creating action, when you're doing action. Um, and God helps those who help themselves. God helps those who help themselves. So if you're just going to sit on your, here's an example. If you tell me I want a new boyfriend and then you just sit and hide in your house every day, you're not going to find a new boyfriend. You have to like get out in the public and go meet people, go to a meetup group, go do something. You're not going to meet a boyfriend if you sit and hide in your house every day. And I mean, unless you're somebody who's going to find them on the computer, but even then at some point, you're going to have to meet up with that person um, in person, you're going to have to meet up with them. So you're going to have to get up and do something at some point. So don't make excuses because you're blocking your, your happiness. You're blocking your joy. Every time you make an excuse, if you want to accomplish something in your life that is going to make you happy, you need to literally move heaven and earth. You need to get up and you need to, to brainstorm with yourself, sit down with the paper and pen and write out, what are all the different things I could do to achieve this? And maybe it's bartering with somebody else. Maybe you really want a massage, but you can't afford it. I have friends who can't afford massages and they go to their massage therapist and they say, hey, I'm a Reiki practitioner or I'm a this or I'm a that. Can we do an exchange? I will do this for you if you do a massage for me. And that is how you get your self-care when you don't have money. There's, there's so many ways around it. I've had to do this for myself. I've had plenty of times where I needed services and I wasn't able to afford the services. So I went and I did out of the box thinking to get those. I mean, another idea is my website, my very, um, the very first website I ever created back in 2011, I couldn't afford to pay a web designer. So what I, what I did is I went to the high school and they had a graphic arts department there where they were teaching young pumpkin heads how to create websites. And um, I asked the instructor, could you have maybe somebody in your class do this as a project? Because websites was part of their school curriculum, you know, creating a website. I said, well, I need a website. Can you have somebody create it? And, um, you know, I wouldn't have to pay for it. And not only did he agree to it, but the teacher himself actually wanted to do my website. And the reason he wanted to do it is because he wanted to start a site he, or he had a side business, or he wanted to start a side business where he was doing more website design for people, uh, um, besides being a teacher, because being a teacher and teaching that stuff wasn't making him enough money. So he basically did my website for me in exchange for a testimonial for him so that he could use it for his business. Um, 
I also had somebody do that again recently where I had somebody redesign my website and she was starting a web design business and she needed clients to give her testimonials so that she could get paying clients because she had to start somewhere. Um, so this is an example of how I needed something. I didn't have the money to pay for this thing that I needed. And I was able to move a mountain, you know, by thinking outside of the box, you know, stop putting yourselves into a little square box, start thinking out of the box, getting creative. You have creative abilities that God gave you. God gave all of us the ability to create and to co-create together. And so start doing that for yourself. It's all part of the self-love because when you love yourself, you are willing to fight for yourself. So I want you to think about that very strongly. Next time you say, I can't do this, I can't do that. If there's something that you want, you want it really bad and it's going to make you happy to have that, just know that you are important enough and that you can love yourself enough to fight for whatever that is for yourself. Somebody else may never ever step up to the plate and fight for you or bring that to you or give that to you, but you can do it for yourself because you love yourself unconditionally. So it's very, very important to understand, um, you know, this whole concept of the self-love and, and self-love is not a selfish thing. I'm not talking about being an ego or being selfish or being self-centered. I'm talking about taking care of yourself and an actual agape love, that agape unconditional love. I've done tons of videos talking about it. And I've talked about it with um, Maria Bernardi. So we've talked about agape love, um, this unconditional love that Christ has for us, that mother, father, God has for us, source that the angels have for us. It's an unconditional love. There's no conditions. They don't love you only when you're good or only when you're, when you're, white or brown or blue or green they they love you all the time they always love you and that's how you need to be loving your own self because if you don't it starts with you if you don't start loving yourself the way god loves you and start seeing yourself as perfect and beautiful the way god sees you i mean you could sit there every day and go oh i'm so ugly i don't like my big nose and you know i used to be that way i'd look in the mirror and say i hate my nose I hate my hooded eyes. I hate this. I hate that. I don't like all these things about myself. And now I'm learning the older I get, the more spiritually evolved I get as a human that I am. God made me the way I am for a reason. I'm perfect just the way I am. I don't need to be anything else. I don't need to be someone else. I'm fine just the way I am. And so I'm learning to live with myself and accept myself and love myself that way because I'm a human. We're all humans. And this is part of the human being process of, you know, being human and experiencing this earth plane in a human body. So anyways, recap, um, number one thing you, you're all going to do for your homework. I'm assigning you all homework. If you're watching this video, you're going to look in the mirror every day. Tell yourself you love yourself, give yourself a hug, love on your pets if you have them. Next, you're going to do fun things for yourself every day. Try to do stuff that gives you joy and makes you happiness. And the last thing you're going to do is keep paper and pens around. Start paying attention to your negative mean girl, mean boy talking, um, all the hater talk in your head against yourself. You know, you're not good enough. You're not this. Oh, my wife will never accept me. Oh, this will never how oh, my in-laws will never like me, whatever. Write it all down, scratch, and then cross it off and write the opposite positive to that. You know, everywhere I go, people love me. Everywhere I go, people like me. Everywhere I go, I'm accepted, you know, with joy, whatever, you know, write the opposite down. And then I want you to just sit back and watch how your life changes. And then one other final thought is no matter what shitty things you're going through on a daily basis, try to smile because smiling changes your whole body. It changes everything. It changes your demeanor. It changes your cells in your body. It actually um, helps heal every cell in your body. It releases endorphins. Um, it's so healing for you to smile. So no matter how crappy your day is or how many people, you know, were mean to you or bullied you that day, smile at yourself. Just try to smile, practice smiling in the mirror. You know, if you have to turn on comedy, the best way to do it, which I do for myself when I'm feeling really shitty is I turn on something funny, like an old Robin Williams movie or an old, um, up comedy from, um, 
oh, I don't know, John Belushi or somebody, somebody funny from the seventies, like Andy Kaufman or somebody like that, who was really funny, who really made me pee my pants, you know, laughing really hard. You know, my favorite one of all was Robin Williams. He always made me laugh. Eddie Murphy made, makes me laugh. There's a lot of different um, comedians on the planet who I've, I've followed. There's this new guy who's a Patriot. He's um, a comedian for the Patriots and he, he's amazing. And he goes on tour and does all these Patriot comedy tours. I for, I don't remember his name. I know he's got a long, he's got a beard. Um, he kind of looks like a woodsman, but he's hilarious. So watch these, watch this stuff. If you're feeling really down and you can't get yourself to smile at all, because smiling is really going to help you heal and it's going to change your outlook on everything. So that's my final advice. And, um, Thank you all for joining me. And just to re remind you all, I'm going to hold this picture up. So my my best friend, whoops, Sarah Nash designed this. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see. For some reason, it's not. There we go. Is that? Okay. That's Yeshua and Miriam of Magdala. She kind of looks a little bit like me, actually. But no, I'm not her. She's not on earth right now. She won't be coming back to earth until we go 5D. Um, anyways, so I have my new book out, Walking with Yeshua and Mary Magdalene. It is not available on Amazon. It's not available on any kind of a public venue or in a print book because print books, I would have to, because I'm not going through a publishing company making it public, I'd have to pay thousands of dollars to print up hundreds of copies up front and I may never see that money back again. So how I'm doing it is a PDF. I have the link in the description here. You can go to the link through um, Stripe and pay $11 for it. And then I email you the PDF. If you don't get it within three days, then send me a text. Please check your spam because I would say half the people I've sent these out to, I've gotten messages. I didn't, you know, I didn't get it, Kimberly. And then I say, look in your spam. And every time they look in their spam, that's where it is. So if you don't get it within three days, check your spam, please. And um, the email it's coming from is kimpalm at outlook.com. That's the email it's going to come from. And so check your spam for that. And if you don't find it, then send me a message. Don't jump the gun and send me a message and say, I didn't get it until you've checked your spam because it's happening on a regular basis now. But it's $11. Um, it's the whole story of the true story of them based on my past life memories and also based on my having multiple conversations with them, asking them tons and tons of questions about their lives. I go all the way back to before they came to earth, where they came from all their incarnations, who they were before they came here, um, their bloodline. Um, there's tons of stuff about the Bible in there, tons of stuff about the church, tons of stuff about the first cross, um, his whole timeline, like the entire timeline from the minute he's born until he leaves. And then after he leaves and what happened all about the first church um, and on and on and on. And then, and then I have a whole chapter answering questions. And then I have another chapter where I got messages from him, like channeled messages or downloads from him to share with everybody. And I shared a bunch of those messages in that chapter. So, um, so that's what that is. It cannot be made public because it's got controversial stuff in it that the world um, is not ready for. The only people this book is for are awake seekers of the truth. People who are spiritually motivated do not share this book with people who are still in churches and indoctrinated. They will hate it. They will freak out. It will make them really angry, really upset. It is not for them at all. It is only for people who are awake and open-minded. They're open-minded people. Um, people who are closed-minded with the blinders on, this is not their book. Um, so I will ask you that. And if you're going to buy multiple copies, make sure you send me $11 for each one you're going to send out because I put hundreds and hundreds of hours of my time into this book and I won't even... Even if I sold 4,000 copies of this book right now, it doesn't pay me back for all the time I put in to it. So I'm barely getting any money for this as it is. So it's not like some kind of big money maker for me. It's going to pay me back a little bit of money, but not even close to what I put into it. So, um, so that's all I ask. And thank you all for your support. Thank you for supporting my channel. I love you all. Take care and I'll see you next time.